Where's the exit wound? That's the question blowing up online about Charlie Kirk's assassination, and the real answer is stranger than you think. But while everyone is chasing conspiracies, the truth is actually found in a place that most people never get to see, the autopsy room. So today, let's talk about what really happens when someone is murdered, what an autopsy looks like, and why results take so long to come out. Because trust me, there's a process. And it's not as quick or clean as the internet wants it to be. When Kirk was shot in the neck, people online immediately noticed there was no exit wound. Cue the conspiracy theories. I mean, I love a good conspiracy, but yeah. When people online saw no exit wound, the theories came flying faster than the bullet itself. But sometimes the body just keeps the receipts. According to his spokesman, Andrew Colvett, the surgeon was stunned. That bullet should have been a through and through. Instead, the coroner found it lodged just beneath the skin. So yes, there was no exit wound. Not because of a cover-up, but because the bullet simply never exited. And in a bizarre twist, that probably saved lives. It could have hit staff, crowd, behind the tent, behind Charlie Kirk. That's ballistics for you. Unpredictable, messy, and often surprising. Now, why does this sound familiar? Because this isn't the first time a missing wound or an unexpected bullet path has launched a thousand conspiracy theories. Think about JFK. Half a century later, people are still dissecting the Zapruder film frame by frame, arguing over whether there was one bullet, two bullets, or a cover-up. The head wound, the angles, the magic bullet. That confusion lives on because what we see on film doesn't always match what the body shows on the table. Or look at Tupac. His autopsy photo became infamous online because people swore it was fake. Why? because they didn't want to believe he actually died. And the wounds didn't look like how the internet expected them to look. So suddenly it turned into Tupac faked his death. Tupac's living in Cuba. Sound familiar? The Charlie Kirk exit wound rumor is just the latest in a long line of cases where what the public sees doesn't match what forensic science later confirms. And every single time, conspiracy theories fill that gap. Now I get it. We live in a world where we've all seen things online that we can't unsee. And this case was no different. It's not every day a public figure collapses on camera in front of the world. And when that happens, people want answers. They don't always trust the media. They start looking at blurry screenshots, asking why things don't look the way that they expected them to. And suddenly there's a thousand different theories. And honestly, that's human nature. But here's the thing. What looks like a mystery to the internet is just a Tuesday to a medical examiner. Which brings us to the autopsy. Had lots of questions about the autopsy. And here's something most people don't know. If there's a video of the death, the autopsy team still has to watch it. Even if it's obvious, they need to compare what's on the tape with what they see on the table. That's part of making sure the cause and manner of death are accurate and defensible. So here's the step-by-step. -step. One, they do an external examination. They photograph the body, document every wound, bruise, tattoo, scar. If there's a gunshot wound, they measure it. Note any powder burns, stippling, entrance versus exit, if there is one. Two, evidence collection. Clothing is bagged, projectiles are recovered, fingernail scraping, swaps, you name it. In a shooting case, bullets or fragments are removed and logged as evidence for ballistic testing. I also want to note that when they are collecting the clothes from the medical examiner's office, they do cut them off of the body. I don't know why they do that. It drives me crazy because I've had families ask for the clothing back after autopsy and they are cut. Step number three, they do an internal examination. This is where that Y incision happens. Organs are removed, weighed, and examined. The bullet track is traced through tissue to show exactly where it hit. If the bullet stopped inside, like in Kirk's case, it's recovered and preserved for evidence. And then step number four, they do toxicology samples. Blood, urine, vitreous fluid from the eyes, tissue samples. Even when death is obvious from a gunshot, toxicology is required. 
That's actually the part that takes the longest for us to get the autopsy results back. So let's pause. What is toxicology? It's basically the science of testing what substances were in the body. Alcohol, drugs, medications, poisons. It matters because even if someone is killed by a gunshot, substances in their system can change how the case is interpreted legally or medically. Sometimes you think it's a straightforward case and then toxicology reveals something unexpected. Think of it as a death cocktail menu. And trust me, nobody wants to order off of it. And step number five is review of outside evidence that includes medical records, police reports, and yes, the video footage. All of it helps piece together a full picture. Now here's the part that frustrates the public and the media, I'm sure, speed. The autopsy itself might only take a few hours, but the report, that takes weeks. So why? Toxicology, the big delay. Four to six weeks to get those results back is normal. Now there might be backlogs. Many medical examiner's offices are understaffed. They process orders in the order they receive them. Utah has been criticized before for slow turnaround times or a legal review. Sometimes reports are held back if releasing them could interfere with a criminal trial. So we might not get these results right away. So even though the family might get preliminary findings right away, the final report is rarely public for a month or two. And I looked it up and the state of Utah state law requires the office of the medical examiner to provide a full report, but it doesn't say how fast. Delays are normal. That means the Kirk family might already have some answers, but the public, we're waiting. And that's a standard. So where does that leave us? Charlie Kirk's death was shocking, and watching it play out on video only adds to the public's unease. But the missing exit wound isn't a cover-up. It was just how the bullet behaved. And as for the rest, that will come from the autopsy once the science is finished. That's the thing about working with the dead. They don't lie. The evidence is there, but you have to give it time to be uncovered. The internet loves conspiracies, but at the end of the day, rumors decay. Science sticks around. So yes, ask questions, be curious, but also understand that in cases like this, the answers don't come from Twitter threads. They come from the autopsy table. Personally, I will be interested to see the traje traje I can't say it, trajectory path of the wound that once they examine that if we get public records released I'll, i will definitely be making another part to this video to discuss and answer any questions that you might have that i can answer uh, but until that time i'm lauren the mortician thank you for liking subscribing and supporting my channel my goal is to help normalize death through talking about it it shouldn't be something that we hide cover up or, or don't talk about it can make people uncomfortable and honestly it should it should make you uncomfortable this this whole situation should make you uncomfortable my heart hurts for his children his wife his family and his supporters that looked up to listening to him speak nobody should ever have their life taken because of their political views or what they believe in religiously